Hello everybody, welcome to another Making It Monday. I'm glad you could join me this evening. I'm looking a bit dark on the screen. I hope I'm not too dark for you. Hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Um, so we're on um, project 38, um, which is the fancy flower brooch. Now, I did actually say um, this is going to be a little bit different to what we normally do, because we normally make little things, you know, to sort of put our tools in or put our pennies in or whatever it is, you know, they, they're kind of useful little pouchy storagey type things. Um, but um, two or three weeks ago in my um, gold group, we actually did something, well, almost identical to this. And I never did make a pattern that I can remember. And I thought, wouldn't it be a good idea if I did that for a Making It Monday project? Because um, it's a really nice make and actually quite useful um, because, of course, you can use it as a brooch if you want to as in the, my bag here, or you could use it for some applique if you want to. Um, you could take the pieces and sort of trans transform them into other things because I've given you all the pattern pieces. So you don't have to use the petals. You could just use the flower shape for applique. Um, you could hand stitch, you could machine stitch. Um, oh, we've got somebody checking in from Mexico. I can't see the names. Uh, it's it's ridiculous the colors that I get on my screen here. Um, so yes, yeah, so uh, it's all about using what's in the pattern to actually do things that you want to do and then and incorporate them in other other work, I suppose. Um, so so project 38, the fancy flower brooch, I decided to call it a brooch because that's what I made. Um, but you could use it for all of those other things that I've just said. So I'm just going to pop onto my Facebook page here because I can see everybody commenting, but it's coming up in bright blue. <laughs> and uh, consequently, I can't read them at all. <laughs> Ooh, let's have a look. Let's just switch that off. Sorry about that. You might be able to hear that. Let's just... Um, Let's just get that. There we go. That's lovely. So now I can see the comments in, in not royal blue. Um, I think it's, it's my software on my, my program here that, um, that does that to me. Uh, anyway, enough of technology. We don't do technology, do we? We just, we just enjoy, the, enjoy the moment of being together um, in, the, in the group. So, yeah. So, making it Monday... Project 38, the fancy flower brooch, let's get started. Now look, I haven't done a thing. Oh, let me show you the flower on my bag, because that was that what was in the photograph. Um, I've kind of moved it down a little bit. So that's the one with the multicolored petals, because you might notice there's two different sorts in the pattern if you've had a little read through. Um, and I'll, we'll, we'll talk about it all as we go through. So this is um, the multicolored one on a white background, and it just sits beautifully on that bag. Um, and that, that's one of my current gold pans as it happens um it's uh, it's amelia which is lovely and that'll be in the shop next month for for non-gold members um i actually and i have seen a lot of these made so i'm i'm really i'm really thrilled that people love the patterns i make so yeah so we're going to make the multi-petal one because i figured why not um the other one is on the bag behind me this so this is a, a batik version of this bag um and it's got the single um fabric on it uh, let me bring it in because you might be able to see it better if i bring it in um and you can see look it's just one piece of fabric so you've got the choice of the two um, which is quite nice to have a choice often on a making it monday project we we don't we like to um we like to keep it simple because simple works best for us all and it gives us a moment to actually um, sort of t take, take 10 minutes out for ourselves. 10 minutes, an hour, okay. Take some time out for ourselves, which is really, really important. Now I've got uh, YouTube up on my screen now, which is excellent. Sometimes I have to wait ages for that. So that's brilliant. Um, now we've got um, a couple of new admin members, um, Nicola and Karen, uh, who have joined my other ladies to actually um, sort of help you all out on Facebook and on YouTube. So if you've got any questions, uh, one or two of them are knocking about tonight. Um, 
and if I can see their names, which I absolutely cannot, um, I will mention them. But um, we've got Jackie on YouTube for sure. I think we've got Gemma on YouTube and Facebook. We've also got, um, I think we've got Nicola on both as well. And I've got uh, Kath on Facebook. And I think Jackie, will, the other Jackie, will probably be on both as well. So there's lots of people around if you want to ask questions. The first thing I wanted to talk to you about really quickly is, because I know you're going to ask, because I know you guys, I know you guys, um, is that you may ask where I get my brooch bags from. I, I, I must admit, I have... Um, quite a collection of brooch backs but oftentimes people will ask me i know you can't see a thing but there's brooch backs in my hand uh, people often ask me where did you get them from blah 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 so what i did was i went on to amazon who obviously is on is our new best friend and ordered a new set which means there is a link are going to be put on both well, hopefully my ladies are going to do that for me <laughs> please um on uh, facebook and youtube there's going to be a link uh, which goes via abigail's shop my daughter's shop um she gets the teeniest teeniest piece of commission for it but it what it means is that you can buy the same brooch bags as me i have no idea how much stock they have they may have five they may have 50 they may have 500 i have no idea i'm not in the know but these are the brooch bags that I got. There's um, four different sizes. Um, I think there was a hundred. I'm not sure. I forget. I forget a lot. But there's four different sizes. And I thought, you know what? There is the link. Hopefully somebody's going to post it for us, which is going to be amazing. So look out for that. Don't don't nag anybody about it. We'll, we'll do it in, in due course. So that's really, really kind of Abigail to let us do that. Um, yeah, so those are the brooch bags. Um, so let's just have a quick look. I cannot read anything. Oh, somebody's put that on there. How marvellous. Um, so Jackie Thomas has put the um, brooch backs link on there on Facebook. And I'm sure Jackie on YouTube will be doing the same. Um, and it's just lovely that my lovely ladies are helping me out because you know what? They are like gold. Well, they are gold. Um, so we'll just say a quick hello. We've got Jeanette and Jackie and Karen and Sandra and Chris and Skye. Um, Hope you get better soon, Sky. Teresa and Anne and Jane, another Jane and Marie and Dot, Lorraine. Gosh, there's hundreds and hundreds of you. So that welcome. Um, all told, we've got just over 300 between um, uh, um, Facebook and YouTube. So well done. Thank you for joining me. Right, let's get cracking on this then. I'm going to just move that bag out of the way so I've got a bit more room. We'll go on the overhead. The first thing I'm hoping, if you're going to try and follow me along, I'm, I haven't cut a thing, okay, so you can follow me along. Um, hopefully you've downloaded the pattern. And not the last page, but the page before the last <laughs> um, is... I can just about see are the, the patterns. Now this is just an example of what your flower should end up looking like roughly, okay? Uh, so that is just, that's nothing that you need to worry about. You can use those lines if you want to. But what I've given you are the outlines for the outer of the flower. So in the case that I've done, the one that I've made is the white. We're going to do black this evening. And then you've got the inner, and I'm hoping you can see it, the inner, which is slightly smaller. Um, and that can be two things. It can be the front of your with your pretty fabric, and it can be the back. Um, because you've got lots of different options and as we go through I can talk to you about it and, and then you've got the petals and then you've got the two centerpieces so, so some really nice simple shapes um, and we're going to transfer these now on to heat and bond you can use bonder web steamer seam anything that you use with a fusible layer if you like a glue sheet is absolutely fine um, and then we're going to free motion so now look you don't have to free motion don't panic you don't have to free motion you can do uh, you know like hand stitch or like a blanket stitch or you could do a running stitch or just do some french knots to keep all the layers together um, you could try using your regular foot on your machine and just pivot and turn, pivot and turn, pivot and turn. Keep your stitch stitch length on um, a small setting, let's say two, because um, that'll be easier for you to get around the curves. So don't panic. If you don't like free motion, um, 
A, I really can't understand that. <laughs> but B, there's so many different alternatives. So you don't need to worry about it, okay? It's, I know it's gonna be a question that comes up, do I have to? No, you don't. Um, so we'll follow the pattern well, as, as best as I can. You know, you know what I'm like, I go off kilter so much. I've got my pencil handy. I've got my heat and bond handy and actually this is the ultra hold and you do not need ultra hold. I've totally run out of the heat and bond light. I've ordered some more, um, but you, do, you can just use whatever you normally use is fine. It doesn't, there's no secret ingredients. So um, what we'll do is we'll go on the overhead. It's a little bit boring. When I come to the cutting out, we'll come back to the front view again, but it's sometimes nice to see how things are um, sort of progressing, if you like, how we're doing things and how we're, we're going to, um, you know, prepare everything. So um, this is the, let me pick it up. This says both options out of flower. Okay, so we need to trace, well, I'm gonna trace two because I want one for the back and one for the front. Um, please don't worry too much about whether you go off the lines or not. Just do your best. You won't need a light box for this um, because the way I sort of print the lines, they're nice and thick. Well, they're, they're um, not thick, but <laughs> you don't have to worry. Now, look, if I'm rubbing my mic, just let me know because I've got my head down and um, I'm rubbing, I, I can feel it. So apologies if I'm, uh, if you can hear some funny sounds. So yeah, so I'm just literally tracing one, then I'm going to trace another one. So I told you this might be a little bit boring. I'm just gonna space them apart a little bit because I'm going to cut um, these two pieces out on the same piece of felt. So you'll see what, what I mean when I get to it. Now, if you're, <laughs> I've gone off a bit of the line there. If you're not drawing as quickly as me, don't worry, do as much as you can. Um, just do the front, just do the one, and then you can do the back later. So there's two, traced two, you can see that? And then we're going to, we're gonna cut the petals and, and these pieces here. So I'm just gonna turn that around. Um, and we need five petals, one, two, three, four, five, yes. <laughs> I was trying to do six. I know that sounds a bit weird. I was actually trying to do six, but um, my graphics um, got the better of me and um, I couldn't. <laughs> so, so you've got five. <laughs> oh dear, there's honesty for you. But yeah, sometimes that's what happens, isn't it? Now look, I'm spacing my pieces out because I'm doing the multicolour petals, okay? The single one, you'd be cutting this one out, this little one here. Um, yep, so anyway, one, two, three, four. Let's uh, get this one. And these are all going to be cut out uh, individually. So I'm kind of giving them enough space. And then the little big circle here, and I have to sketch my circles around. And to be honest, because this is going to be like a free motion piece, I won't worry too much if it's a perfect circle. Please, please don't aim for that. I mean, if you if it's a bit off kilter, then that's fine. It's that's it's quirky. So we don't need that anymore for the moment. So put that to one side. Um, and then don't forget, this is the heat and bond. This is the heat and bond, bond to web, steamer seam, blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever um, weapon of choice you use for um, this sort of work. Okay, so there's um, one. Um, let me think about this. No, I'm actually, I only want one for the, for the, no, hold on, I'm just thinking this through because I'm thinking, am I doing this right? This is going to be for the back because I need glue on the back, but I don't need any glue on the front, okay, because my petals are going to stick down as they are. So I need to use get my chalk pen out and actually chalk that on. But because this is a, in fact, where's the pattern piece? Because... I was thinking earlier, why did I cut that pattern piece out? There we go. Um, 
because our petals are going to be stuck down on our felt, you need to draw around your front piece, okay? You don't need um, any sticky on there. You don't need any heat and bond on there. The only one you need heat and bond on is the back, the back one. Okay, sorry about that. I just got myself in a, in a, in a, in a muddle. So then we need to cut out our petals. So again, I'm just cutting out roughly. If you're at all anxious about, you know, saving fabric, then cut these a little bit smaller, perhaps a little bit neater. Um, and then let's just cut out the five. And then you won't waste so much fabric because this, this paint and bond obviously will stick to the fabric and you'll, you'll end up either using it on another project if it's a big piece or you'll uh, throw it away. So, you, and you might get upset about that. So we've got five petals, heat and bond, perfect. Then we're going to cut our circles out. So let's, let's just do that. If I'm going off camera, I am sorry. So let's just roughly cut them out. There's no point cutting around these beautifully and then having to cut around them beautifully again. Okay, so there's my two circles. There's my piece for my backing. And now if I can reach my chalk pen, which is not the most brilliant chalk pen in the world. I don't think I've got my other one here. We'll see how we get on. But I want to do this in black. So I have cut out the big one. Um, accurately that I wondered why I had a pan piece. I'm thinking, why, why have I done that? <laughs> I only did this pattern last week. You'd think I'd remember. So um, with this one, all we're going to do is um, hopefully my pen is going to work. Well, I'll tell you what, if not, because that doesn't look like it's going to, I could do with a decent chalk pen is that we can just pin this down and cut around it. And that'll be absolutely fine. And like I said to you before, um, don't worry about going slightly off piste with the um, the cutting out. The cutting out it doesn't have to be uber uber perfect. So this was going to be our front piece. So I've pinned the pattern piece down. So um, if you're keeping up with me, and I know I'm going a little bit speedy tonight, um, I'll actually I might I might just try and chill a little. There we go. Um, and I'm just going to cut around that. Now look, this is the cheapest chips felt that I've got, okay? You could use fabric if you want to, you could use fabric. And um, you do not want to use a really hot iron with this or use something to protect the felt as you're sticking the petals down. Um, I made a huge boo-boo yesterday because I switched my iron on completely forgetting I was using a synthetic felt and guess what happened? Yes, we know the story. So, um, <laughs> so just be aware of the heat of your iron and like I say you might, you might want to sort of turn it down a little bit. So again we're just going around the edge of our um, petal and if you did put heat and bond, if you know, if you're using felt and if you've already prepped this and you have put heat and bond on the, the, the outer petal, which I, uh, do you know, I can't, I can't blim and remember now, um, then use that for the back, use that as the back, okay? Um, and then you'll glue the two pieces together. That's absolutely fine. So you might find it tricky to actually um, put your petals on, but you could use an, an applique sheet they are brilliant. If you haven't got an applique sheet, that's something else you might want to add to your stash. It just allows you to build up things and the glue doesn't stick. Well, it, it sticks to the applique sheet, but when it's cool, you can just peel things off. And if you, if you don't know what on earth I'm talking about, have a little Google and um, see if you can um, pick it up. So there we are. So there's our, our front flower and I'll just pop the pins in the pin cushion. There we go, like that. Good, fantastic. So there's our per first little piece done. So that's the front of our um, brooch. 
So this is the other piece of Bonder Web. So this is the one I did just a little minute ago. So I'm just roughly cutting that out. I don't want to see, because all of this white paper would make my felt useless unless I used it for other projects. Um, so I cut a fair bit away and I'm going to glue this down onto my felt um, and then I can cut it out. So if I put my iron on, well, uh, medium, if I show you my little iron, there's the maximum, there's the minimum. So it's on about a two, because like I say, it's, uh, it's uh, synthetic. So let's bring the mat in and I can bring, put my petals on there as well. Let's have a look. Oh, I can never grab hold anything with these nails. I need a, I need a more of a knobbly surface so I can grab things. There we go. Good. There's, there's my petals because we'll do those in a minute. And um, so this is going to be the back. Okay, this is going to be the back. And like I said to you before, if you wanted to, you could do the smaller one. Let me show you on the bag while you're just um, catching up, maybe. Let me just get my bag. Oh, that's different. Oh, God, which, which one is it that had the backing? Oh, this one. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's like... Uh, I've never done it before in my life. Right, let me just take my um, brooch off. Sorry if it's boring viewing, I do apologise. There we go. So, <laughs> so you can, if you want to, put the smaller flower on the back. So this is my multicoloured one, but it, you can mix or match all of these around. So I just happened to choose this, how it is. Anyway, so I chose the smaller flower to go on the back, but you don't have to. On the other one, I'm using the same size to adhere, and that's what I'm going to do with this one. So just be very, very careful with your iron. Um, I would just, you know, be cautious. You do not want to melt your felt. You really, really don't. So just be extra cautious with it. Um, and actually, this this sort of stuff, it doesn't. It's not like um, putting on a violin. It should be uh, quick. It should be quick. It should take the glue, if you like. The glue melts really quite quickly. So I'm just roughly cutting this out. Because, like I said to you a moment ago, I don't want to waste any of my felt. I mean, it's not expensive, but even so. So there's my <laughs> roughly cut flower. So once again, we're just going to go in there and go around the outside. So talk amongst yourselves. Um, when I've cut this out, I will give it another press to make sure the glue is melted onto the felt. And like I said to you before, this is the back with the heat and bond on. Or bond a web, whatever you... Your weapon of choice. Your weapon of choice. Um, don't worry about super duper accuracy. I quite like it. I mean, obviously I've done this on my graphics program, so it's, it's, it's pretty much perfect. But um, I would never say anything was perfect, but so it's pretty much perfect. And... Uh, so by cutting it out by hand, you're actually giving it a few quirks of your own. And I quite like that idea. I quite like that idea. And if you wanted to, you could make a couple of layers. You don't have to use black. It's a bit, perhaps a bit boring. I don't know. But um, you could layer, layer one or two of these up. Whatever your machine or your patience will take. So there's our flower cut out with the bonder web on the back. So just to make sure, I'm just going to go over it again, just to make sure that glue is melted. Okay, and we're going to allow that to cool. We'll put that to one side to cool. So now we've got all of these bits. So it's just really a case of finding the fabric. So you can see, look, there's one that I actually cut out on one of my, so I'm going to use that again. So let's pop that on there. So we need to, we need to do five. So I can turn that up a little bit because it's cotton. This is a little bit of liberty. Um, so you're putting it on the back. You're putting all your petals on the back just to make sure that you know um, they don't go on the front. 
So hopefully we're giving these things enough time to, to glue. Oh look, there's another one that I used. Can you see? So you can waste quite a bit if you're not careful. I love this, this colour here, so I'm going to pick that up on the, the petal. So if you're fussy cutting like that, you may well lose a little bit. Oh, look at this. Lovely bit of liberty. Oh, gosh. So that with that one, you see how we've got the sort of stripes? So I'm just going to make sure my petal goes down the stripes and not across. So again, it's something that you might want to consider. Okay. And then, oh, look at this. Lovely piece. Oh, sorry, we're not supposed to be admiring my little liberty stash. Uh, if anybody doesn't know what Liberty is, Liberty & Co of London, yeah, give them a little Google. Um, this is not, I don't, well actually it might be Liberty, but what I'm going to do, see my middle circle there, I'm going to pop it over here um, and that, that way, which, let's have a look, make sure, oh back, and then we'll have a pink centre which would be awesome. And so that's on the back of that, that's lovely. And then do you see that little scrap? I'm going to see. Yep, that fits perfectly. So that's, in fact, I need to turn my iron down. I don't want to melt the, the felt. <laughs> Honestly, that was hilarious, mind. If you didn't see me on TV yesterday, you missed a trick. Um, uh, Abigail said she couldn't she couldn't uh, she couldn't believe how quick it was that I I went to this is one I've made earlier it was like a two second <laughs> flip from one to the other because silly me had my setting still on cotton and uh, yeah so I wonder we didn't set the fire alarm off right so <laughs> I'm now going to cut all my other little bits out so this is the, the pink circle so again, you could fussy cut, you could find a little flower or, I don't know, a ladybird or, I don't know, something like that. Because when you stitch these middle pieces, um, you only go around the, the, outer, the outer bit, so you'd still see it. So don't forget, that's our back. <laughs> so again, roughly cut, but don't waste... Don't waste too much. Uh, have you, you know, you, you'll, you, if, you've, if you've been following me for a little while, um, you know that I love a little bit of crumb quilting when I get time. And uh, all of those little bits can be saved for crumb quilting or at least more applique. <clears throat> so again, because I'm, I, the reason I don't prep these things is because some of you like to try and stitch along with me. And it's such a joy when I finish the live on a Monday night and I go in and I check all the, the posts and the comments and I make sure if we've had any trolls, <laughs> then um, I, uh, I delete things. And I, I, although my lovely ladies do that for me as well. Um, and it's, it's just lovely because by the time I've had a quick look and make sure YouTube's okay and upload it to the website and do all those little jobs, um, some people have usually made one of them or one or two of them because yeah, some of the some of them I go so slow that you could possibly make two in an hour, which is great. I'd love it. You've no idea how much joy it brings me. It really does. So the last petal now, you'll be pleased to know, I'll get rid of all my scraps, all my bits, so they're out of my way, nice and clear desk. I'm completely changing my room around sometime, possibly this week. <laughs> we shall see. So you'll have a new outlook. So there we are. So there's my little petals. They look lovely, don't they? And this, so we'll just keep remembering that's the back, so I can put that to one side. Um, we need a little tiny piece to go through the brooch back, because the brooch back goes something like that. And, oh, it could go like that, whatever you decide. Um, but we need a little piece of felt to go through that, but we'll cut that. I'll put it on the floor now. But we'll cut that um, as we get to it, okay? So, 
now we've got what we've got to do is build up our flower so obviously what you're going to do is put all your petals onto your flower now with this heat and bond I can just put my nail on the back of the paper I can literally just um, scrape like that with my nail and you can see it lifts lifts and separates the two layers quite quite easily with a bit of a scrape of my nail um, so I'll, I'll lay the petals down and then I'll decide if that's how I like them <laughs> so all I do is get my nail and just scrape the back like that and it separates it's not so easy with with their uh, bondo web um, but you, you know a lot of people just scrape a pin or scratch it with your scissors and stuff like that but you could of course damage your fabric if you're a little heavy-handed so let's just put that one down I just remembered I said we'd go to the front camera when I'm cutting out we didn't do that I do apologize look at that where I've cut the little leaf <laughs> so that's that's my petals now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch these down we're going to, well, we're going to iron them down so they're stuck um, and then we're going to stitch them and then we we put our centerpiece on okay so it doesn't take very long at all and I've got my my needle cam ready hopefully all set up so it's just a case of keeping your eye on them because they may wriggle so you might want to sort of move them around a little bit you might also want to protect your work so if I use a little bit of my cotton again because you'll want to be careful of that felt <laughs> uh, oh right so I'm just covering it up with a piece of cotton I've got my heat on just medium again but I'm just going to use the heat to melt the glue on the back of the petals okay and I'm just going to check because you don't want them lifting you don't want them lifting I think I think we're okay and it's interesting because if I put these pieces on to white they would look really bright but because I put them on to black it's kind of dulled everything down which which actually is quite nice now I'm going to a free motion around there in black because sometimes it's, it's traditional to do that I'm not I don't like that word traditional but it's a very um, common way let's say of um, uh, stitching your, your pieces down but you could if you wanted to to brighten this up a little bit you could use a silver thread or a gold thread but I figured I'd keep it simple tonight and we're just going for black um, as, as is pretty standard so um, hopefully you've you've kept up a little bit I have no idea I haven't looked at the comments I hope everybody's okay um, we've got uh, YouTube over here um, Nicola's commenting on there Nicola's one of the uh, admin team as is Jackie so look out for them and ask them questions if you want to um, on YouTube I'd have to look at my phone because I can't see a thing on there um, <laughs> we've um, we've got um, probably got Kath on here I haven't seen her name oh we've got Jackie as well um, and the other Jackie so everybody's on there Gemma's on there as well just keeping an eye on things answering questions um, if you've got any any queries at all please please ask that's what we're all here for to make it easy for you um, oh there we are there's Catherine on there and um, and also just a quick reminder that you can download the pattern from my my website lizzycurtis.com and it's in the MIM patterns section of the website okay not it's not too difficult to do that and to find me if you in fact if you just google Lizzie Curtis you'll get everything up yeah yeah I'm not that famous but I just happen to have a lot of things going on right so we're going to free motion now let's talk about this stitch length please don't even look at your stitch length okay drop your feed dogs that's it if you can't drop your feed dogs or you use a darning plate I prefer it if you didn't then put your stitch length on zero so only put your stitch length on zero if you cannot or don't want to drop your feed dogs okay so either or every machine in the entire world 
I'll put my neck on the line here, can do free motion. So I don't want to hear my machine can't do it or no, uh, I don't know what to do with my machine. Every machine can. If you can't drop your feed dogs, put your stitch length on zero. Don't bother with the darning plate. Seriously, put your stitch length on zero. If you can drop your feed dogs, drop your feed dogs, hurrah. And um, <laughs> that's it. And, and the other thing I would say to you is, get a piece of fabric. Uh, oh, here we go, another scrap piece of fabric. Oh gosh, I could use my black, but I won't. Oh, all my lovely liberties down here. I didn't have any scraps. Get a piece of scrap fabric, double it up so you've got a bit of substance. Put some interfacing on it if you want. Uh, it's not necessary, but you could. And then just do a couple of minutes practice. So what I mean by that, I'm going to just get my mouse. Let's just try and get you sorted with the old graphics here. So let's put you on needle cam. <laughs> there we go. Let's go on needle cam. And um, what I mean by that is just get a couple of a little piece of scrap fabric. Like I said, two layers. You can use interfacing, whatever you like, any scrap that you've got. Make sure you always put your foot down. You should still be able to move that fabric. It's not like putting down um, a regular um, pressure, uh, press, press foot. It's, it should it should still move and most well a lot of free motion um, feet have springs here which allows it to hover and move above your fabric um, so just get a piece of scrap and just test test yourself out just have a little go at moving your fabric um, a, you, you know, stitching, moving your fabric and just making those stitches. Um, don't worry about tension just at the moment. If it looks a bit tight, which this does, then loosen your tension off a little bit. But I would wait until you actually do your piece of work. So just sort of practice, do a little scribble, there's nothing elaborate going on there, um, and just get the feel of moving the fabric. I mean, you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but that's quite tight. So I've loosened my tension off a little bit. It should be fine. Um, yeah, so don't, don't be afraid. It's, it's, it is drawing with thread, but it's nothing for you to, to get het up about. And you know what? This is, as this is a bit of um, nice fabric, I should be unpicking that after the hour. Right, so we've got our piece. Okay, oops, sorry. And what I'd like you to do, if you've got any, is to put some stabiliser behind. And now let, I've just realised my stabiliser is behind the light. Just a second. Oh, normally it's um, right in front of me. Um, and it's a t I'm using a tear away. Um, it's the sort of stuff that you would find behind badges on sweatshirts and things like that. OK, it's, it's quite good stuff. Um, if you haven't got any tear away stabilizer, then just use another piece of fabric like I don't know, a piece of calico, a piece of sheeting, anything that allows you to stitch a more solid piece than, than this flower on its own. That would be quite tricky to move around your machine. But once you put it on a piece of stabiliser, um, you, now you don't have to glue it down, but if you feel that this is a bit much for you, then use your temporary spray and stitch it and stick it down. So I obviously use this um, Crafter's Companion one. Um, oh, that's far too much, but there we are. And you can just pop it onto your um, tear away and it'll stick and it, it won't move but to be honest you, it's fine without it okay it's fine without it just have it floating they call it floating in, in, in machine embroidery and normally you would put this in the hoop with your fabric of choice etc etc and it's called a floating layer but and we're doing exactly the same OK, that's all we're doing. Nothing special. But if you haven't got any of this stuff, it's cheap as chips. But if you haven't got any, then use a cheap old calico, something like that. Now, I know you won't be able to see huge amounts, but you'll see me go round the flower. So put the needle down 
um, put your foot down. You could do a couple of little stitches just to secure the end of your thread. And if you have, oh, I'm just covered in glue now. If you have got a loose end, then cut it. But with my machine, it tends to sort of suck it down or, you know, it goes underneath. So just relax. You don't want your hands anywhere near the needle. You want to have your hands sort of here. Um, you'll see as I'm stitching how that looks. Um, I stitch usually towards me. Um, I'm not desperately keen on going backwards, but I will. You can move your work if you want to. Do two layers, two rows of stitching, because if you go wobbly, and I'll deliberately do this so it looks wobbly, then if you do two layers or even three, it starts to look deliberate, okay? It starts to look like you meant to, which is far better than trying to do one layer utterly perfect, and it's, it's awful, because, <laughs> you know, we've all been there. So two or three rows of stitching, um, like I say, you, if you are a bit wriggly, then, it, like I say, it'll look deliberate, and that's great. And to be honest, a lot of applique like this looks, looks like that. Um, <clears throat> so by stitching towards me, I'm helping to make sure that that petal stays flat. My tension's still a bit off, but I'm just gonna ignore it. And just enjoy the process. I mean, I love, love, love machine embroidery. I, I obviously don't have any time to do it. So this is kind of like my guilty pleasure tonight. Um, but I, all I would suggest to you is, is practice. And somebody had a great analogy the other day. I can't remember who it was that said this. It might have been Sarah Payne. And she said, you didn't get into a car and just drive it. You got in a car and you learnt how to drive. You learnt how to use the gear stick, the, the brakes, the mirrors, blah, blah, blah. So, and this is just the same. You've got to learn how to do it. Um, and it might take several attempts to, to pass. <laughs> well, you might be lucky. I don't know how that, what happened in, the pandemic, I suppose, all of that sort of thing stopped, didn't it? Didn't sort of take any notice of that. Right, so we've gone all the way around the flower. See how quick that was? I want you to look at my work. It's not 100% and actually I absolutely do not mind at all. Oh, it was Sarah Payne, was it? Yeah, I thought I'd heard it some. You could use wrapping tissue paper. You absolutely can. Totally. I love it when you will come up with suggestions. I really love it. So um, we can tear this away now or we can stitch the centre pieces in and then tear it away. I can't think for a minute it's going to make any difference. So we'll just go ahead and, st and stitch the other ones on. But what I need to do is iron that centre black circle on. So if we just come quickly back to the overhead, let's just quickly do that. There we go. And you can see, and this is attached. If I show you the back, you can see what it looks like. <laughs> I, I would have preferred six petals, but anyway. <laughs> my, uh, my graphic system will let me do it. Anyway, so um, I've got my iron on. And uh, let's just get the mouse out of the way. And we're going to take the backing off of our black circle. And we're going to iron that onto the... Um, center and don't forget um, this black circle doesn't get stitched just the center piece does well, that doesn't want to play ball at all come along it's because it's on felt it reacts differently so there's my center circle you can see the glue so that's going over the top I want you to protect your work again I don't want you to put put this on and then shrivel your your felt just awful, awful, awful. So I'm pretty happy that that's stuck on, yep. And then we take the backing off of our pink piece, which we fussy cut. I like the idea of a little ladybird in there, actually. Now, <clears throat> when you come to put the center piece on, you could put it absolutely dead center, or you could go a bit quirky 
and take it off centre a bit. OK, I quite like it like that, but we'll bring it back. We'll be good. So that's going to be stuck down in the centre. And again, protect your work with a bit of, uh, bit of scrap um, fabric. You could use a little bit of this, so you're going to tear all this away and that's going to be waste, um, pretty much. Um, so you could use a bit of this, but this will scorch, I just warn you now. So that's well and truly stuck on. And it's, it was nice if you wait for it to cool before you stitch. Um, because you don't want that gloopy glue coming up into your uh, needle. Right, so let's go back to needle cam. Let's see if we can get this going. Uh, let me just lift my machine and bring it over a little bit. There we go, it's a bit better. So what we're going to do now is um, stitch the centre of the circle. Sorry, let me bring this in. So we've ironed it down, so we're just going to stitch. And, and I'm literally just going to go on the pink and I'm going to do um, a couple of rows around that pink. That's all. So again, do the same process, foot down, needle in or needle in, foot down, whichever way you want to go. Do a couple of little stitches on the, on the spot. Be careful you don't um, lose your thread or unthread your needle or anything grotty. I've got a tail this time so you can see. All I'm going to do is lift up the tail. I don't know if you can see that. Let's do it so you can see. <laughs> I think you can see. If I, there we are, there's a little tail just there, look. Just there. So I'm just going to snip that. Don't snip it too soon. You might um, lose your stitch. Right, so we're just going to go round. And there's quite a few layers here, so you might find uh, your machine clunking a little bit. Um, please use a new needle, use a size 12. Um, so, yep, change change your needle quite, quite a few times, you know, sort of every... Well, it depends how much you stitch. And I'm just going to... I'm doing a bit more because I'm just making the centre a little bit more interesting. So... That's it. So I've done. But if, if you look at it, and you see, it's just a little bit more interesting. I'm trying to get it so it shows in the light. Okay. Yes, you should really have odd numbers, shouldn't you, with flowers? Sorry, somebody's making a comment on the um, on the uh, on the Facebook there. Yeah, we should. Um, is this project for your members? No, you we no, because if it was for my members you wouldn't be able to watch because it's top secret when I do for my members. It's for everybody. It's actually for everybody in the whole world. And one of one of the ladies that well, I think is a lady that downloads um, is from Singapore. With, I, 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 seriously, if I go through all my orders, because I can, even if they're, you know, um, free of charge, if I can go through my orders, they're for people from all over the world. Seriously, it's lovely. It's really lovely that you can have that influence. Right, so we've stitched the flower. So let's just go on the overhead so you can see what I do to actually tear this away. Um, be very careful of your stitching. So what I do is I always hold the first little bit and I start to tear away. I always hold my, my piece. I know it's, let me take my mat away. Um, I always hold my piece here and, stare, and tear away. Don't just gung-ho it because you can rip the fabric. You can rip stitches out. Um, so just be careful. So let's just rip that away. And what you, what you can't rip away don't worry about it because it's going to get sandwiched. That's why we're putting a back on this so it's nice and neat. But if you can't, um, you know, if you can't get those bits out of the middle, don't worry. Uh, like I say, if you buy a sweatshirt or something, or even a T-shirt that has a logo on it, oftentimes you get this sort of stuff on the back and they don't peel it all off. You have a look next time you get your sweatshirt out. Might be a bit too warm at the moment for sweatshirts, I don't know. Pretty cold here today and very rainy. But there we are, I mustn't complain. So just try to get it away from the edges so you can trim it if you want. 
because it's not attached to anything. Although we used a little bit of um, temporary glue, um, it's, <coughs> excuse me, it's not permanent, so you can just peel out all the way. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm quite happy with that. And there we go. So that's what the back looks like. And if you want to, take these out, but I really can't be bothered. <laughs> okay, I really can't be bothered. It's perfectly fine like that. There we go. So there's the front of our, our lovely brooch. Looks quite nice, doesn't it? And like I said, the dark, the black, black felt is making the fabric, it um, sort of dulls it down a little bit. Maybe that's your thing. If you put that on white, that would completely change it. Completely change it. Um, so somebody said that on there, on the Facebook. I was just seeing if I can catch up with the comments because I get them a little bit later on my phone. Uh, oh, it's Myra. Myra said, would you believe I've been practicing my free motion tonight? Just took me three years. <laughs> Missed nearly the whole demo. Oh, Myra, you know you can watch it back anytime you like. It's either on the website, on Lizzie Curtis or on YouTube. There we go. Right, so there's our flower. I've got bits of felt everywhere. I'm going to ignore it. So now what we need to do is to stitch our brooch back onto our the back of our um, flower. Now look, I want you to think about this. We've got a stabiliser on the back. I'm going to take off the stabiliser, the, the, the heat and bond. And what that'll mean is that the back of your piece, the back of your flower, is um, it's not sticky, but it's clingy. It's, you know, it's like, it's, oh gosh, you know, it's like vinyl. It'll cling to your machine, but we're only going to be stitching a little bit. So there's a couple of things you can do. The first thing, that's better. The first thing is to ignore it and just let it stick and just do, the, do your best. The second is to get a little bit of um, talcum powder or chalk or something like that. I, I don't think I've got mine handy. I never do when I need it. Um, oh, I can see it. I might see if I can grab it. Is to actually put a little bit of talcum powder on there. Let me get it. I'm going to just zoom off my seat. Fortunately, the, um, Millie the dog is nowhere to be seen. And I'll show you what I do. And it, it's not to the detriment of the piece of work at all, but it takes the sticky off, right? Any, any powder. I just happen to be using baby powder, but any powder is fine. So now we're all going to smell of um, baby's bottoms. Oh, for goodness sake, what's... Oh, here we are. Um, so just a little. You don't need a huge amount, seriously. Not, <laughs> not a lot. But you work that in, work that in. There we go. That's, that's worked in as, as much as I want. And that's taken the whole of that clagginess away. The, it's not sticky, it's just a bit like vinyl. Um, but by putting that bit of powder on, it takes that away. And so it won't stick to the bed of your machine when you put the brooch on the back. Now look, if I've, if I've got powder on there now, but you could easily just get a damp cloth and just um, wash that away or move it away. So here's our brooch back. So if you, if you didn't get the link for these, um, I mean, I don't know how, how many Amazon have. I'm, I'm not in the palm of Amazon's hand. I have no idea. But um, uh, I gave you the link to buy four different sizes of these. So we need a little scrap. And in the destructions, I've said a, a one inch by three quarters of an inch. But really all you need, oh, I've got a piece of Bondo web on there. All you need is a little rectangle. So I'm just kind of, you know, guessing this. Now, because this is black, this is not going to be easy for you to see. But there's my little piece. I haven't measured it. I've just kind of guesstimated it. And it wants to lie over the back of your brooch back. So if I put it on there, you can't see the brooch back now because I've put the piece on. If I take it away, that's what it looks like. And we're going to get our um, zipper foot on our machine and we're going to stitch as close as we can get to that brooch back. Now, I really, really, really want you to be careful with your needle because you're going near this, this whole piece of metal here. So don't go crazy and get as near as near can be. Just 
a millimeter two millimeters away is perfectly fine i mean my you know my zipper foot is is peculiar and um, it always sits further away but when we looked at the original if you look at the original one that's about as close as you want to be now like i said you're not going to be able to see this very well because i'm using black um, but there we are i'm sorry about that so let's let's go to um needle cam bring the machine in and i just need to change to my um sorry and to my zipper foot which is here let's just get the machine sorted there you go that's a bit better um, so don't forget to lift your feed dogs up sometimes on some machines they don't lift up mine are still down but as soon as you start stitching they will pop up so don't think it's broken if they're staying down they they probably will do <laughs> um, but uh, it's when you start stitching that they pop up again so let's get that zipper foot on so like I say zipper foot is good because you want it to be fairly close otherwise the brooch back will just um, fall out basically um, and then we're just going to stitch directly on so what I'll do is I've made mine a lot bigger than an inch it's, it is about three quarters of an inch but I'm going to show you on my camera what it looks like and I'm hoping you'll be able to see you can see the talcum powder because I can see it but I've just put that rectangle over the top of my brooch bag you can see that the pin is off is, is undone so we're going to trap that brooch back between two rows of stitching so either side let me show you the original one and then you'll see what I'm talking about so look so that's what we're going to do and when that's closed it's locked in place which is handy so I like to say you're not going to see very much because it's black on black um, and then we're going to trim it away so just get as near as you can I'm just going to move that little there's a little catch I'm just going to move that out of the way and stitch length two and a half feed dogs up and as soon as I turn the, the needle the, the, the ha um, flywheel the I could hear the feed dogs come up and then you're just going as far as you can don't obviously go over the edge of your flower it's a waste of time and then come back on yourself and then so you're doing at least two rows of stitching I doubt whether you'll see it but let me turn it to the sticky side you can just about see it so we're going to do the same again so move that brooch back over put your needle put your foot down rather needle in and then you're just moving along that bar but be very very careful of your needle I don't want you messaging me saying I've broken 10 needles now Lizzie what are you going to do about it I say nothing I, you didn't he listen to me so <laughs> so I've made my um, I've stitched my two bits down if I do it like that you can see those are the the ends and I'm just going to trim them so if we turn that it like that you can see the two tram lines okay so hopefully that's um, that's fairly clear so let's just get this um, on the overhead so you can see what I'm up to we need the little I need the mat in again so we're going to trim this back I know it's hard for you to see but I'm going to trim this back it's not beautifully positioned but I'm okay with that and because we did two rows do three rows that's now really secure if I bring that up to the camera tilt it a bit maybe who thought that black was a good idea you can see what that looks like and then of course this can just go over the top and if I open up the little bit like that you can hear crashing it's John with the dishwasher <laughs> I can hear it from here uh, okay where am I hold on bear with bear with everybody bear with oh there's my hole there look I had to go to the optician Friday I've got new glasses coming 
And she said, oh, she said, your um, prescription has really changed from last time. I thought, well, that's it. Tell me I'm blind. And um, anyway, she put one of the, you know, you, you know, they have to put the discs in the glasses and they put them on your face. And she said, How, how's that looking? How, can you read the bottom line for me? And I said, I can't see a thing. Everything's gone gone um, white. I can't see a thing. Oh, my goodness. And she went, oh, sorry, you've steamed up because you've got your mask on. What? <laughs> so she she took it out and, and put, rubbed it on, on her top, put it back in. Perfectly fine. <laughs> that wasn't, yeah, I thought, oh, my God, I can't see a thing. <laughs> right. This is the back. If you want to take these this out, please take it out. But it does actually give it a little bit more stability. I'm assuming you're never going to wash it. So this is the front, this is the back. Now, if you remember, we've got glue on here. So once again, and, and this is the same size. And like I said, you, you may have cut the smaller flower and that's perfectly fine because that's how it would look. You'd have the black going around the outside and you'd have this one solid piece um, on the inside. And it doesn't matter which you do, that's just, just a variation of a theme. So again, we need the iron, but again, we're using felt. Now you don't have to use felt. You could use some gorgeous fabric and, and, ha and have a sort of a secret pretty back to this. You don't have to use um, felt. But what we will do is do our little trick of covering everything up and just get it, letting the heat of the iron do its magic. In fact, let me let me come back up to the front because this is going to be a bit boring. <laughs> oh dear me! You can admire my my backdrop. I don't think I've got much on my backdrop tonight. I think I had a bit of a tidy. Well, we're going to revamp the whole of the workroom. I'm not looking forward to it, but I might find things that I'd lost. <laughs> which is going to be good. So what we're doing is oh, we're actually gluing the two layers together. Um, just make sure you do get the layers sitting on top. So it gives it a really nice neat back plus it gives it stability again because we've got all those layers going on. So um, bear that in mind. But like I say you might not want to use the felt. I mean, I'm being super cautious, which is probably just as well. <laughs> and um, just take your time because you don't want it to shrivel up before your eyes. And to be honest, this these won't take long to make. I mean, what are we on? We're on eight o'clock, so we're just we're just bang on time, really. But really, if when you're when you're doing it, it shouldn't take longer than half an hour, if that. So that's all glued on. Now. Um, the only thing I would say is we haven't glued right near that brooch back so you might want to spend a bit of time just putting the heat on there or you could put the heat from the front. You could get your steam iron which 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 although it's damp it's fine with the glue but the steam is actually really hot and that will go through the fabric and that will adhere that center together or you could just keep pressing it and pressing it and that heat will eventually go through and all of those layers will stick together beautifully so there we are looks quite nice it wouldn't i tell you what it looked better on this bag because this is slightly darker oh yeah that looks nice yeah I like that. So you can decide, can't you, what you do. So there's a lot of variations on this, but there's also some quite useful shapes. So you might want to use those shapes as they are. You can do some applique with some just flowers. Um, I just think it would be marvelous. Like I say, if I had more time in my, in my days, I would do it myself. Right, that's it from me. Um, this is another Making It Monday project number 38 sad to think then um and uh, we, we're just getting through them like a rate of knots now aren't we so don't forget to go and have a look at the mim patterns um obviously it's only this week's that you can get for free at uh, checkout and if you don't know what i'm talking about please go to the making it monday exclamation mark 
um, Facebook page and everything is on there about how to get the MIMS, when they're launched, um, how long they're available to you for, at that special um, discounted price. Um, and also you can have a look at what everybody else has made. So hopefully I'll have seen a few of these um, by the morning, by tomorrow. Um, and I just think they're super cute. Something quite different for us, as I said, because normally we'll do a pouch or a bag or something that's quite practical. But actually I thought, you know what, even if you've made one of the, the little ironing bags, little Irene, um, you, could, you could put this on the front. And if you put a brooch back on it, you can swap it around, can't you? And I think these sort of things are quite nice to, to have a little go at. They're not such a huge project that it'll put you off. So I need to, yes, very nice. <laughs> Right, um, I'm done. I hope you've had enjoyed yourselves. I hope you're still enjoying the Making It Monday projects. Um, don't forget to check out the Making It Monday um, Facebook page. Um, it's private only because we were um, spammed like crazy when we first started. So we had to make it private, which is such a nuisance. But there's no um, limits or rules to getting in as long as you're not a shop or anything like that. We won't let you in if you're a, a shop. But um, yes, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed it. Please keep coming back. Um, I just enjoy doing it for you. It's lovely to see them actually building up on the website now, isn't it? I quite like that. I get a, I get a kick out of seeing all the lovely little pictures. Um, and I've got some new camera equipment coming tomorrow as well. So things might even improve even more. <laughs> as if. Right. Have a lovely evening, the rest of you. If you're, if you're over in stateside, have a lovely rest of your afternoon. Enjoy the sunshine, go out for a walk. Um, if you're in Australia, it's a bit early in the morning for you yet, isn't it? Yeah. If you're watching from Australia, just switch off, go back to sleep for at least three hours. <laughs> and I'll see you all again next week. Um, enjoy, enjoy making them and I'd love to see what you do with them. Bye, everybody. Night-night.